Lister, will you please lead us in this evening's invocation? I will, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, give us the power to clearly discern right from wrong, allow our words and actions to be governed thereby and by the laws of this land. We ask for your inspiration to strive in our endeavors to serve the public. We also ask that you direct us that above all things, we discharge our duties for the benefits of the citizens of Madeira Beach. Amen. 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 Please remain standing and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of our country. I, I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And before we get started, uh, I was at the dentist earlier, so hopefully everybody will excuse me if I seem to go a little left here. <laughs> and this, having fun tonight. Um, City Clerk, would you please call the roll? Vice Mayor Hodges? Here. Commissioner Lister? I'm here. Commissioner Poe? Here. Commissioner Schantz? Here. Mayor Palladino? Here. <coughs> this time I'll entertain a motion for the approval of the provided minutes. Mr. Mayor, I so move with the exception of me being present for the 5.30 meeting. I am marked present and I was certainly absent for that. So with that exception, the minutes are good. All right. Actually, what I'll do is entertain a motion for uh, correction to the uh, provided up minutes. I so move. Second. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion amongst the commission? Would the city clerk please call the roll? Vice Mayor Hodges? Here. Commissioner Lister? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Yes. Commissioner Schantz? Yes. Mayor Palladino? Yes. It, uh, before I ask for a motion uh, to approve the agenda, there's a few items if, uh, if it pleases the commission if we could pull it this time. Uh, number one will be the proclam proclamation for the Elks Club. That will be presented to the Elks Club on 9-11. And with the uh, resolution coming up in the agenda, hopefully that will pass and so that'll, if that's okay with you all. Also, uh, the Sheriff Bob Gulteri will not be able to be present with us until November. <clears throat> and also, um, item number five on the consent agenda, I'd like to see if we could refer that to the next available meeting. I'll make the motion. Okay. I second it, Mr. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion amongst the commission? Would the city clerk please call the roll? Vice Mayor Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Lister? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Yes. Commissioner Schantz? Yes. Mayor Palladino? Yes. Next proclamate, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, proclamations. Uh, the Yellow Ribbon Youth Suicide Awareness Prevention Week. Uh, Bonnie, if you'd please join me at the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, it's unfortunate. Uh, Bonnie, I've been the mayor of the city of Madeira Beach for four years, and uh, for four years, um, you know, you've come to the city of Madeira Beach, and we've done this, and uh, we are so sorry for your loss, but what you do to make the awareness of suicide amongst youth, God bless you. Um, Yellow Ribbon Youth Suicide Awareness Prevention Week, September 7th through September 13th, 2014. Whereas youth suicide is one of the most disruptive and tragic events a family and a community can experience and is occurring at a national rate of over 5,000 suicides annually. And whereas youth suicide is the fastest growing killer youth today. And whereas Florida is one of the leading states of youth suicide with at least one youth suicide every week. Suicide kills youth three to six times more than homicide. Research shows that almost all youth suicides are preventable, and whereas the issue of youth suicide, how to prevent it, is the extreme importance and most recognized as an immediate need for awareness and prevention. And whereas statistics show that awareness, education, and action do save lives, heightens community awareness, will encourage communities to develop strategies 
prevent youth suicide. The city of Madeira Beach is pleased to be at the forefront in leading these worthwhile efforts. And whereas the yellow ribbon is recognized internationally as the symbol for awareness and prevention of youth suicide, it is recognized and used by suicide prevention groups, crisis centers, schools, churches, youth centers, hospitals, counselors, teachers, parents, and especially youth themselves. Now, therefore, I, Travis Palladino, Mayor of the City of Madeira Beach, Florida, on behalf of the entire Board of Commissioners and staff, do hereby proclaim September 7th through September 13th, 2014, Yellow Ribbon Youth Suicide Awareness and Prevention Week, and urge all citizens to work to prevent youth suicide, wear a yellow ribbon, and to wear awareness and tolerance around all people affected by the strategy. Excuse me, I just got to rub a little too. Bonnie, and Bonnie, if you want to tell a little bit, I'm sure you're having your event once again at Absolutely. the uh, Arthur Ball Park, and also my wife and myself would like to also start your donation today. We're oh. going to accept some love and uh, population. Okay. Well, appreciate that. And if you'd like to let everybody kind of know what's going on. Sure. Uh, All righty. Um, this will mark our 13th year that we're going to have our evening of remembrance on Archibald Beach in Madeira Beach. And I've always come to this beach because this was my son's favorite one. And uh, as I said, it'll be our 13th year. This is for people who've loved lo lost loved ones to suicide. We do a little candlelight vigil and we uh, do a lot of different little things for people because surviving suicide or, or being a, somebody who's lost uh, someone to suicide is one of the most tragic losses because there's no answer they take the reason why they took their lives with them so you're left with only why and what did i miss and what didn't i do so uh with this time we've passed out flyers that have all the warning signs and risk factors to suicide and that doesn't matter if it's a teen or an adult all these risk factors and um, uh, warning signs are pretty much the same and I brought with us our quilts again this year. If, if you don't mind, I'd like to share them. Please Thank do, you. The first one is to show you some of the people we've, lo we've lost to suicide. This is my son up in this corner. He was my only child, and he was 17 and a half when he took his life. Turn around here so. Again, I always put my son, there he is on, on Archibald Beach, sitting there, enjoying the evening. That was probably about three months before he passed away. And sitting there on Archibald Beach, that's why this is one of my favorite places to come. And they really do like that. this puts a kind of an idea of what you get to see here is um, how many people die in one year in the state of Florida. Every one of these yellow rivers represents somebody who's lost their life to suicide. And when I show this quilt at the schools, and I recently taught at one of the local middle schools, the kids always ask me, what's with the heart in the center? And I said, that's the heart after you lose your loved ones to suicide. But that, that really gives you an idea of how many lives we lose here in the state of Florida. I think my turn I think we might have one or two of the yellow ribbons have fallen off from the last time I showed it. Well, uh, uh, PEMS is very graciously um, gives me a space. So twice uh, a month, I, I do a um, 
group called HALOS, which is for people who've lost loved ones to suicide. And uh, PEMS is, is the place people go when they get Baker Acted here in the state of Florida. And the, it's an amazing organization, and they reach out with very little money to, that, that comes into them from grant money from the state where we've lost a lot of money to, to uh, mental health in the last few years. In case you wonder why there's so many people walking around that look like they should be at a mental health institute, that's because we don't have any money to put them there. So um, that's one of the biggest issues we're facing at the time is that, that the funding is so low for suicide prevention and for, for, for mental health at this time. Um, but that's, that's what I work with PEMS. In fact, uh, uh, the gentleman that I worked with for the last five years recently passed away in a car accident. So, um, you know, I, he's, he was one of the reasons why I got to hook up with PEMS and um, start the group. And actually, ladies and gentlemen, uh, one more thing, and hopefully Bonnie won't get mad at me, but uh, she has had a lot of tragedy in her life, but she had a good announcement, she told me. And, uh, <laughs> actually, she's engaged, and she's, she's about to get married, and she'll well. actually be one of our first weddings at the new Archibald Park. So, uh -huh. Bonnie, y'all got congratulations, <laughs> and God you. bless you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. appreciate it. The, uh, I believe we have eight shifts with us this evening, and if the firefighters and lieutenant from eight shift would please join us at this time. I'm going to actually ask you to do the proclamation since I am not doing too well this evening. Outstanding, Mary. Thank you for shit. this uh, opportunity. You too, buddy. Thank you. This is a proclamation is given to us each year for Fire Prevention Week, which runs October 5th through October 11th. Whereas the city of Madeira Beach is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living and visiting Madeira Beach. And whereas fire is a serious public safety concern, both locally and nationally, and homes are in locations where people are at greatest risk of fire, and whereas home fires killed more than 2,300 people in the United States in 2012, according to the National Fire Protection Association, and the fire departments in the United States responded to more than 365,000 home fires, and whereas working smoke alarms cut the risk of dying in reported home fires in half, and three out of five home fire deaths result from fires in properties without wo working smoke alarms. And whereas in one-fifth of the homes with smoke alarms, none were working, and when smoke alarms should have been operating, they did not do so, it was usually because batteries were missing, disconnected, or dead. Whereas Madeira Beach residents should install smoke alarms in every sleeping room outside each sleeping area and on every level of the home, smoke alarms and smoke alerts devices meet the needs of people who are deaf or hard of hearing. And whereas Madeira Beach residents who have planned and practiced a home fire mm -hmm. safety escape plan are more prepared and will therefore be more likely to survive a fire. And whereas Madeira Beach first responders are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education, and the Madeira Beach residents are responsible to public education measures and are able to take personal steps to increase their safety from fire, especially in their homes. And whereas the 2014 Fire Prevention Week theme, Working Smoke Alarms Save Lives, Test Yours Every Month, effectively serves as a reminder to us that we need working smoke alarms to give us the time to get out safely. Therefore, I... Well, Travis Palladino. You got, you got this part or you want I me to finish? Go ahead, <laughs> <laughs> awesome. The mayor of the city of Madeira Beach do hereby proclaim October 5th through the 11th, 2014 as Fire Prevention Week throughout this city. And I urge all the people of Madeira Beach to test their smoke alarms at least every month by pushing the test button and to support the many public safety activities and efforts of the Madeira Beach Fire Department and the emergency services through Fire Prevention Week. 2014. On this ninth day of September, 2014, Mayor Travis Palladino. Thank you very much. Fire Chief Darrell <laughs> O'Neill, I appreciate your help tonight. And ladies and gentlemen, real quick, uh, you know, uh, a few things, and, and, I, and I like kind of recognizing some of these guys once in a while, but uh, Firefighter Childress over here, you might remember a couple months ago, he was uh, named uh, Firefighter uh, of the Year from the VFW here in the city of Madeira Beach. Well, each VFW in the state of Florida sent their recommendations and their uh, contestants or, or the volunteers 
to uh, to Tallahassee. And uh, this year, ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to announce that uh, Firefighter Andy Childress is actually the BFW State of Florida of the Year Firefighter. So, this this crew here is all of our shifts. This is A shift, B shift, and C shift. Uh, I've seen these guys. They switch around. They work with each other. And I mean, they're an outstanding group. I mean, all of them. I've seen each one of them do, you know, rise to the occasion and protecting us, and not only us in the Deer Beach, but the Reddingtons or wherever they're at to serve. I know I'm thinking of another crew right here, uh, Firefighter Foster, who's actually still what they consider what they call a Proby. And uh, I know a couple of months ago, he actually got on the waterboard on the waterboard rescue. I think it was two to three foot speed, swam out and rescued two people out in Jaws Pass Channel. Outstanding job, firefighter. Mm -hmm. leadership that's from the lieutenants of the, the shift to the chief itself and guys what y'all do and also to bmc chip and i just thank you very much thank you thank you. thank you thanks guys mayor while you're walking back up i'd just like to say on behalf of all the firefighters and paramedics that work for the city of madeira beach and for the citizens of madeira beach we appreciate uh, the continued support of, of yourself and the rest of the commission uh it's your actions that allow us to provide the high level of support uh, and, and advanced life support and fire suppression to our community. So thank you. Thank you, Fire Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. All right. Next. Uh, Presentation from Tranquil Shores Foundation. How are you doing this evening? Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor and Commissioners, for having me here today. Um, my name is Katarina Tassara Runyon, and um, I'm just pleased to have the opportunity to come and talk to you a little bit about a new nonprofit organization um, that is here in the city of Madeira Beach. Um, I was very pleased a couple of weeks ago to be able to meet with Shane and Travis and tell them a little bit about the work uh, that Tranquil Shores Foundation is doing. Um, so I thank you for the opportunity. I have some information and I'm not sure if I should give this to the city clerk. There are packets for each of the commissioners. Um, the Tranquil Shores Foundation was started about a year ago, really, um, out of the efforts of Tranquil Shores, which is an adult um, rehab and addictions recovery facility that we have here in Madera Beach. Uh, the CEO of the Tranquil Shores uh, wanted to give back to the community, and in his work, he realized that in treating addiction and helping folks to recover, a lot of the stories were really stemmed in childhood and in trauma that a lot of individuals had had in childhood, um, alcoholism, drug addiction within the family being intergenerational. And he recognized that his organization, his business was treating adults, which was great, helping folks that, that needed uh, support. Uh, but he wanted to do something more for children. So he created the Tranquil Shores Foundation, which is its own separate entity, a nonprofit here in Madera. We're right on the other side of the water and the gray building with the blue awning, the teal awning. Um, and the organization's mission really is to help break the cycle of addiction through efforts that champion the healthy development of children and youth. So everything that we're doing is focused on kids under the age of 18, parents that may be in recovery, you know, deserve our, our applause for being in recovery. And the organization seeks to, to reach parents where they're at um, and help them to parent, help them wherever it is that they're needed. Um, so there are a couple of things that we're doing. Uh, one is we know that uh, the research indicates that uh, therapy is incredibly important in helping children deal with their emotions, with trauma. So we have something called a HOPE scholarship that will pay for any family or child in need to seek alternative forms of therapy. So for example, um, equine therapy 
or art therapy, play therapy. These are privileges that most of us, you know, unless we have really good health insurance or have the resources, aren't able to afford and that the state won't traditionally pay for. Uh, but through the efforts of the foundation, we're raising funds to help get kids into actual treatment so that we can help them with their healing. Those resources are available to any citizen here in Madera Beach. We also have educational um, blogs. We have a presence on Facebook. So you're all welcome to, to you know, look for us, Tranquil Shores Foundation. Um, and we have packets of information that we mail parents on a monthly basis with basic stuff like you know healthy child development and um, supporting your child you know the, now that they're starting school. What is that process like emotionally for your child? Uh, we know parenting is difficult enough for those of us that are parents on a good day. And then you add recovery. And wow, that gets a lot harder. Um, so the organization is really about celebrating parents, providing supports to children that have experienced trauma um, and helping to connect them, helping to keep them engaged and supported. We also do a lot through art. And in your packets here, um, you have an invitation uh, to join us at an event that we're having in October on the 29th. It's called Art and Hope, an evening of Art and Hope. And it's all about celebrating parents and recovery, celebrating children, um, and coming together as a community. It'll be at the Duncan McClellan Gallery. If any of you like glass and just the, beautif the beauty within glass, um, he has agreed to sponsor uh, the entire event for us and, and allow us to, to house this fundraiser there. Are there any questions about the organization or anything that I might address that may not be in your packets? Katerina, once again, I appreciate the time that, that we had together, uh, yourself, city manager, and uh, me. and. Uh, I think that uh, some of the things we've talked about that we can work with the city will be good with what y'all are doing. I think working with Bill Carnes, a rock park, I think there's uh, a lot for mm -hmm. us to grow on there. And really thank you for reaching out to us because I think it, it, it goes hand in hand what we're trying to do here in the city of Madeira Beach. So thank you. I mean, Absolutely. Just, we're, we're happy to, to be living in Madeira Beach um, as a nonprofit and happy to continue to just to build and support the good efforts that are happening in this community for children and families. So know that if you need us, we're just right on the other side of the water. You're welcome to stop by any time. We're right next to the insurance um, building, uh, Seminole Insurance Building. So you're welcome to, to come and say hi. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Next presentation, uh, CRS update by Lynn Rossetti. Good evening, commissioners. I just wanted to report to you that I'm in the process right now of preparing our annual CRS recertification. It is an exercise that I do annually. I will be giving you a report of this recertification and also a copy of the press release that we will submit to the local newspapers on our activity. I'm reporting this to you. It's, it's really part of our act, one of our activities of public outreach where we let you know each year that we've done this annual recertification. This is the last cycle visit before next year when we have to do our five-year audit. So that will be a little more intense than just going through what we've done before and letting you, you know, just reporting to you on that. Got any questions? I'll be glad to answer them. Otherwise, um, within a couple of weeks, I'm going to be submitting this to Lori Lear, our ISO representative from um, FEMA and we'll be going ahead and giving you copies of that report. Lynn, just for, well, one quick question. I know that we were boasting some pretty, Madeira Beach was boasting some good numbers on their CRS work uh, from what you've been doing. Are we looking at that to continue with what's I sure going hope on? Because so. I know there's been some change in. They've made some major changes right. in 2013. So we are looking at the new manual, but um, you know, we will be working on ways to bolster our points mm -hmm. and we'll be going from there and hopefully we'll get enough points to at least stay a six. It, and staying with those lower numbers, does that help residents out with their uh, flood insurance? It certainly does. Right now, our, our residents enjoy a 20% insurance discount because of our rating of six. Any other commissioners have any questions for, for 
percent. No, but that 20 percent discount has a lot to do with the work that Lynn's done in the past. I know that Absolutely. you've done a lot of work on that, and, and again, 20 percent off of any policy is, is, is a good deal. And so I just want to say thank you for the work you've done in the mm -hmm. past to say, you know, current with what's happening, because it seems Washington, you know, changes the dartboard all the time on, on where we're <coughs> supposed to go. And I know we have good representation in Tallahassee that to try to pass, you know, easier flood insurance requirements and that type of stuff. But it's difficult for people that uh, that have second homes in Madeira Beach that, that want to continue to to stay here. So that 20 percent helps a lot, and I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Lynn, thank you for keeping up your continued education. I know you spend a lot of time <laughs> going to school to, to stay on top of this, and it does make a difference for the residents of the city. So thank you very much. Once it does. Again. And things like uh, submitting those FEMA grant applications that we did a couple of months back will go a long way in our point system as well because that's showing that we're really moving forward with our outreach pro programs thank you thank you Lynn thank you <laughs> next public comment this section is reserved for public comments on matters or concern pertaining to city business and which are not on the agenda public comment is limited to three minutes would anybody like to speak this evening no closing public comment consent agenda this time I'll entertain a motion for the consent agenda I so move mr. mayor I second <coughs> motions been made and second is there any discussion amongst the Commission would any of the appointment application personnel would like would anybody like to get up and speak this evening mr. Kocheck Jean uh, and who else is here I think uh, okay. Lynn's here. Yeah. Oh, Lynn. Lynn, okay. Hi, Steve Kochik, 15301 Second Street East. I'd like to thank you again for the appointment to the library board. Uh, we're looking forward this year with the Friends of the Library to continue to uh, raise monies to help offset some of the costs over there. Uh, communities are getting along very well. It's good to see Treasure Island and the other communities. Uh, once they see how uh, how many people really use the library? I think it's started to turn the attitude around that the library is an important part of our community. And uh, there's been a change over there uh, as far as the uh, uh, the countywide uh, program, but that seems to be uh, they have a new director now, and that seems to be working along well also. And uh, just want to say thank you again, and uh, look forward to. Uh, uh, having another good deal with it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kochak. Mr. Piotti. <laughs> <coughs> Nothing like another fine Italian guy uh, doing something with the city of Madeira Beach. <laughs> I have no idea. Is that a compliment? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, what? Um, Len Piotti, 513, 129th Avenue East. Uh, I'd just like to say I appreciate very much the opportunity to serve once again in my community. Uh, way back, I guess about 10 or 11 years ago, I started getting involved in our community, and the first thing I did was sign up on the uh, Civil Service Commission. So it's kind of deja vu for me. Uh, we, that was a time when uh, we had things going, and then the, the union came in, and now we're back to where we were be in the beginning. So I uh, appreciate the opportunity, and I look forward to serving. Thank you. Lynn, thank you very much, sir. You bet. And is it Domain? Is that? Gotcha. Okay. Would you? Jeannie Domain, would you like to come up and introduce yourself real quick? You got such a lovely smile, you gotta get up and talk, sorry. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeannie Domain. I know a few of you. Uh, I'm thankful that you've appointed me. Thank you so much, and I look forward to working with all of you, everybody. Great. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. you. And you'll, you'll love it. I, I believe that's where uh, the vice mayor and myself started at, so it's Really? Yes, yeah. you, you learn a lot about your city, and it's, and it's exciting, especially right now with everything going on. You'll enjoy it. Pat's been trying to get me here for a long oh. time. <laughs> <laughs> finally Thank you. did it. I finally did it. Right. Finally did Thank it. you very much. <clears throat> Is there any further comment? Would the city clerk please call the roll? Vice Mayor Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Lister? Yes. Commissioner Polk? Yes. Commissioner Schott? Yes. Mayor Palladino? Yes. Next unfinished business, there's none. New business, resolution 2014-35. Mr. City Attorney, please read by title only. Yes, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners. Resolution 2014-35, 
A resolution of the City of Madeira Beach, Florida, authorizing the staff to apply for and accept a highway beautification grant and entered into a highway beautification council grant landscape construction and maintenance memorandum of agreement with the Florida Department of Transportation. That was a reading of resolution number 2014-35 by title only. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mr. Mayor, I move that resolution 2014-35 be adopted. And second. Motion's been made and seconded. Mr. City Manager, is there any comment from staff? No, sir. Is there any comment from the commission? Is there any further comment? Would the city clerk please call the roll? Vice Mayor Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Lister? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Yes. Commissioner Shaw? Yes. Mayor Palladino? Yes. Next resolution 2014-36. Mr. City Attorney, please read by title only. Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, Resolution 2014-36, a resolution of the City of Madeira Beach, Florida, amending the City of Madeira Beach Policy Handbook to provide that the Mayor may issue proclamations and award the key to the City and providing for an effective date. <coughs> That's a reading of Resolution 2014-36 by title only. At this time, we'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that this Commission pass Resolution 2014-36. Second. I second. A motion's been made and seconded. Is there any comment from staff, Mr. Crawford. Mr. Mayor, we only have 420 of these on stock, so if you could just take it easy, we'd appreciate it. All right, no, no problem. <laughs> a few behind. Um, is there any further comment? Would the state clerk please call the roll? Vice Mayor Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Lister? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Yes. Commissioner Schott? Yes. Mayor Palladino? Yes. Next resolution, 2014-37. Mr. City Attorney, please read by title only. Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, Resolution 2014-37, a resolution of the City of Madeira Beach, Florida, amending the FY2014 general fund budget to increase revenue and expenditures by $10,000 for the Florida Department of Transportation FDOT Landscape Reimbursement <coughs> Agreement. That was a reading of Resolution 2014-37 by title only. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that Resolution 2014-37 be adopted and passed on first reading. I second. Motions are made and seconded. Is there any, any comment from staff, Mr. Uh, Crawford? Mr. Mayor, just that um, it's it's almost an automatic type grant in that we have yet to workshop with you where the money will be spent. So um, between now and the award, uh, we'll be workshopping it. In fact, if the clerk can put this on the next workshop, or Cheryl, if you can take a note, uh, we'll workshop that with you the next time so we can determine where we're going to spend that money and on what. All right. Is there any? Comment from the commission? Question? Is there any further comment? Would the city clerk please call the roll? Vice Mayor Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Lister? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Yes. Commissioner Schott? Yes. Mayor Palladino? Yes. Next resolution 2014 38. Mr. City Attorney, please read by title only. Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, Resolution 2014 38. Resolution of the City of Madeira Beach, Florida, amending the FY 2014 general fund budget to increase building permit revenue by $115,000 and building division operating expenditures by $5,000. That was a reading of resolution 2014-38 by title only. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I uh, move that this commission pass uh, resolution 2014-38. Second. Motion's been made and second. Is there any comment from staff, <coughs> Mr. City Manager? Yes, Mr. Mayor, and before Commissioner Lister no. asked maybe what we can do with that 115K in <laughs> revenue, um, just remember, I mean, the city of Madera Beach is flurrying with development right now. Th that day will end or at least peter out and, and level out at some point, and we're going to need some of these reserves to remain and, and keep a building department at that time. Uh, right now, do we have a lot of building department revenue in the bank? Yeah, absolutely, but it's because of the major projects that you see out there. Um, there's some creative accounting we can get into, and Commissioner Lister, if you want to talk about that after the meeting, we can certainly do that. But uh, I, I think Vince and I will probably come to you in the not so distant future and kind of show you where we're at with that money because uh, we've been getting a lot of questions. I've been getting a lot of questions from you all in regards to where's all that revenue money going. We've got it, but it's restricted and you have to be very careful on how that's used. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll bring that to you probably within the next 90 days. But obviously staff's recommendations to approve. Okay, so the majority of it has to stay within the building department, correct? It's got to be That's spent on building-related things now with the rental inspection ordinance and those things finally getting employed. Frank's good, but at a certain point, he's about ready to pull his hair out as well. And so I think, you know, we may have to look at maybe getting some part-time inspection help when that, when that resolution really gets into the, the heat of the moment, so to speak. 
Um, and with these major projects going on, I mean, like I said, Frank's good and he, he doesn't complain and he'll work his tail off, but at a certain point, there's, there's just more, more work out there than there is for one individual. So um, maybe let's revisit this in 90 days and we can maybe okay. uh, do some sort of summary report. <coughs> Madam State Clerk, will you just make a note of that in 90 day review? Okay. Is there any further comment? I was simply going to say, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. That uh, you know, Frank's doing such a fantastic job. And if and if you think flood insurance is a difficult thing, building colds in Tallahassee change on a daily uh -huh. basis. And Frank is just on top of it, and he really is a, a, an asset to the city. And obviously, it can be seen with the numbers that are that are pouring in. And, and we knew this was going to happen. The, the building department, we've had it before. And it was a nightmare to, to some people, but uh, for to be running so smoothly is a is a credit to not only the, the staff but uh, to Frank himself. So, again, Frank, good job. I know he's not here, but he'll he'll listen to the meeting. Absolutely, and he does do a good job. And we've heard residents come in and uh, tell how great it is to work with them. I've heard from contractors how great it is how the building department works here in the city of Madeira Beach, and we are contractor friendly and I mean it, it reflects on how it works for the people that need work done in the city for the residents it works all the way around commissioner so he is but I you know I, I, I talked with Frank in the past and he you know it's difficult because he does have a standard that he has to live up to and some people don't want to have to live up to those standards so his job is, is difficult but uh, again it, Frank does a good job that's, that's it, it is a, it's a tough spot it's a it lot is. like the code enforcement position <laughs> yeah. can't be everybody's um, friend, the one thing that I can say, and you know, there, there's going to be life after some of us staffers here, but I can tell you the one thing that we've noticed is, and this is no dig on the county or when Treasure Island was doing it, or even the contracted <coughs> company that I hired did it, there's nothing like having somebody on staff that's loyal to the city manager and loyal to the commissioners doing this job. We found a lot of rubber stamps type situations. We're dealing with a situation right now where uh, one of the previous entities just push something through and now we've got an elderly gentleman with a seawall problem in town and that type of thing you got this is one of those positions where and I'm a contract kind of guy it's the one that you got to have home so remember that if uh, we ever get to that point but he has you know Frank I'll, I'll speak for him for this he has a personality that he brought and thought he handled the situation it takes a certain kind of a personality it does I mean you know, I think that the commissioners receive compliments. I've received a lot of crazy compliments. So he's very special, and you don't find that type of a person very often. Congratulations to our city manager for hiring him. Good job, Shane. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'll take all the credit. Yeah, he'll always take all the credit. Don't worry. Um, is there any further comment? Would, would the city clerk please call the roll? Vice Mayor Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Lister? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Yes. Commissioner Schantz? Yes. Mayor Palladino? Yes. Next resolution 2014-39. Mr. City Attorney, please read by title only. Mr. Mayor, resolution number 2014-39, a resolution of the City of Madeira Beach, Florida, amending the FY 2014 general fund budget to increase parking-related revenue by $130,000 and parking-related operating expenditures by $30,000. That was reading of resolution 2014-39 by title only. It is time I'll entertain a motion. I'll make the motion to pass resolution 2014-39. Second. Motion's been made and second. Uh, Mr. City Manager, is there any comments from staff besides this is another good news thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, staff's recommendation is obviously for approval from a parking revenue standpoint. Yeah. Again, having an, an exceptional year, Vince is doing a fantastic job with it. I think the inclusion of the automated meters has a lot to do with this uh, the way that Vince manages his field crew um, also but again we could have a cold summer we could have you know a red tide event we could have a hurricane so um, we're just being real careful with those dollars we don't want to allocate them quite yet let's get a couple more years under our belt and then if you know the routine numbers keep popping up we can think about doing something with those dollars Absolutely, Mr. C. Man. I've obviously been hanging out with Vince too much. I'm getting too conservative. It's nah, that's, it's actually a good thing. Like I say, <laughs> one oil spill, one red tide event, and uh, a hurricane will change those numbers. It changes our world there for a and couple Vince, of budget years. So, Outstanding job. You've done a fantastic job with the revenue of the city. It's just every meeting we're approving or doing a resolution, and it's just going in one direction up. So to you and your staff, thank you very much. And Mr. C. Manager, good hire. <laughs> I'll take all the credit again.
And I'll give you a little credit. <laughs> Uh, is there any further comment? I just want to echo those sentiments and saying that uh, it, it is a, a semi-perfect storm because we've had a, we've had a good year and it was a good timing to change out the you know the quarter meters and and, and to put these in place and uh, and I have come to appreciate Vince's you know semi uh, reluctantness to to put the number at this number which we thought we would probably hit this number but it's nice to do it in increments so I again kudos. Nice job. Somewhere in there, Vince, I think he said he appreciates you. I don't know. If <laughs> <laughs> okay, <I'll> good job. <laughs> and just one more thing to add on top of that. We just received the numbers from uh, the TVC on the bed tax dollars. And right now for this year, we've already surpassed the entire year of 2013. So tourism is up in our county. I'm sure we're going to see another big hit. Things that we're doing in Madeira Beach and us going and what we're doing, bringing in more visitors. I mean, it makes it to where we can go after more bed tax dollars for beautification of the city of Madeira Beach. So, you know, like I said, it's all been a great team effort from the commission, staff, you Mr. City Manager and the residents of the city. So it's, it's, it's outstanding news. So thank you very much to all of y'all. Go right after him, won't you, Travis? Go right after him and get. Oh yeah, you know me, I, if I sniff out money, you're I'm my, on their tail. You're our best, best guy. <laughs> yeah, I like that money. <laughs> our best boy. He's our best guy. Um, Congratulations to you, my dear. Well, it's a team, Pat. Yeah. We're a team, and it works. Yep. So it's uh, it's. I travel this. I travel the state. I travel the county. And uh, anytime I go anywhere, I hear it every time. Y'all got it going on in Madeira Beach, and it's because of what all of us have done together. Yep. All right, Madam City Clerk, would you please call the roll? Vice Mayor Hodges. Yes. Commissioner Lister. Yes. Commissioner Pope. Yes. Commissioner Schantz. Yes. Mayor Palladino. Yes. Next resolution, 2014-40. Mr. City Attorney, please read by title only. Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, Resolution 2014-40, Resolution of the City of Madeira Beach, Florida, amending the FY 2014 General Fund budget to increase revenue by $50,000 for capital project reimbursement from Pinellas County. That was a reading of Resolution 2014-40 by title only. And at this time, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move to Resolution 2014-40 be adopted. <coughs> Second. Motions are made and second. Is there any comment from staff, Mr. City Manager? Uh, Mr. Mayor, you're probably the most familiar of this, uh, of, of anyone. This is the final $50,000 from the county through Andy Squires, I believe, Vincent Day for the groins, right? So that put us at a total of one, 125. Okay. I think we started out at 50 when we first got engaged in this, so we squeezed another $75,000 out of them, which is uh, good. The groins are, are completed. They're not the prettiest beach grinds in the world, but they're certainly functional and they're safe now, so. And, and one way working on this and what I've been able to do, I'm actually working with staff and the city manager and uh, you know Vince and, and Dave, and what we do is uh, go to the county. Look, we do not take nourishment dollars. We don't need them. We've got the, the groins. That was why it was easy getting that money for the groins. But now the next step is to start getting more money for beautification of Gulf Boulevard and some other infrastructure projects on Gulf Boulevard for the city of Madeira Beach. So. Once again, to the staff, uh, Shane, thank you very much for helping out on that. Uh, you know, that we deserve it. We're wonderful. not asking for sand money, we and we watch our communities. Yes, ma'am. That did. was an, an easy one. I, you know, yeah. staff worked hard on that, but Andy Squires is definitely a friend of he's the a city of, of Madeira program. Beach. He's, he's, a, he's a good guy and a good ally to have up at the county. So if you ever see him, give him a pat on the back. All right, is there any further comment? Would the uh, city clerk please call the roll? Vice Mayor Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Lister? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Yes. Commissioner Schantz? Yes. Mayor Palladino? Yes. Next ordinance 2014-10. Mr. City Attorney, please read by title only. Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, Ordinance 2014-10, an ordinance of the City of Madeira Beach, Florida, amending Chapter 26 elections. Section 26 excuse me, 26-3, Election Board, to authorize the Pinellas County Supervisor of Elections to conduct the municipal elections by providing for repeal of ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict herewith to the extent of such conflict, by providing for severability and providing for an effective date. That was a reading of Ordinance 2014-10 by title only. It's the first reading and it requires a public hearing. All righty, at this time I will entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I am uh, moved that this commission pass Ordinance 2014-10 on first reading. I'll second it, Mr. Mayor. Motion has been made and second. <laughs> is, uh, is there any comment from staff, Mr. City Manager? I would defer to either the city clerk or the city okay. attorney. Madam City Clerk. This is basically a housekeeping issue because before the, we had it written that the board 
appointed the election committee, and we've always used Pinellas County as our people to conduct our elections. Is there any further comment? Would the city clerk please call the roll? Vice Mayor Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Lister? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Yes. Commissioner Schatz? Yes. Mayor Palladino? Yes. Next ordinance 2014-11, Mr. City Attorney, please read by title only. Mr. Mayor, Commissioner's Ordinance 2014-11, Ordinance of the City of Madeira Beach, Florida, reaffirming the existing boundaries of said election district within the City of Madeira Beach, Florida, co uh, contain a balance of electors that does not exceed a 15% difference in any district by providing for reading by title only, by providing for repeal of ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict herewith to the extent of such conflict, and by providing for an effective date. That was the reading of Ordinance 2014-11 by title only. It's the first reading, and it does require a public hearing. This time I'll entertain a motion. I move ordinance 2014-11 be passed on first reading. <coughs> Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion amongst the commission? Any discussion from staff, Madam City Clerk? This is basically an ordinance that was, uh, we're supposed to follow up on every four, years. four, every four years to reaffirm that the uh, voting districts are balanced. All right, is there any further comment? Would the city clerk please call the roll? Vice Mayor Hodges? Yes. <coughs> Commissioner Lister? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Yes. Commissioner Schatz? Yes. And Mayor Palladino? Yes. Next reports or correspondence. Does any commissioner have any correspondence or reports? I'd like to give a report. On this okay. Uh, Thursday this week, which is September the 11th, I'm hoping that <coughs> our citizenry citizens will come to our our. 9-11 Memorial. We're having a dedication after four years of a lot of hard work and uh, a lot of fun. We had fun. We had we did hard work. But we finally did it. Right, Steve? We, <laughs> we can finally come to the end of the tunnel with a lot of help from the city also. Uh, we're going to have a wonderful program out there. Uh, the children from the fundamental school are joining in on the program. We have a young man that's coming up from Parrish, Florida. He's going to speak to us uh, about Amer American celebrity and pursuit of happiness. I think that's going to be a very interesting speech by this young man. He's a junior in high school. Uh, and we're going to have a, a, a lot of other things happening in Cratchit, bell ceremony. Uh, just we're, we're going to have a lot of things. Remember that awful, awful. Um, I think we have an outstanding memorial in the city of Bear Beach that we're going to be very proud of. Um, there's none around like it anywhere that I know of in the state of Florida. Uh, it'll become a nice tourist attraction. It'll be an educational area for the children from the school. So we've done a lot of hard work. Had a lot of help from our community and from our uh, from our city to help get this thing finalized. And so I would like to send to you a very very sincere invitation to be the citizen of Cabo City Center. And thank you, and thank you for all the people and the people that have donated money. I'm sure it's something that the city will be very proud of. That's thank you very much, Pat, and, and thank you for all the hard work that you and Mr. Kocheck and the whole 9-11 uh, ad hoc committee done. I know it's been a long ride. It started when you were actually mayor, yeah. and uh, I'm actually very happy that you're on the Board of Commissioners to see it uh, become, become complete. There were days when I thought I'd never make it. <laughs> yes, ma'am, I know better than that, Pat. You. You're a tough bird. <laughs> you're too right. tough. <laughs> all right. The only thing I have to report is uh, pretty much I've said it before is uh, we've seen great news from uh, the Tourist Development Council, bed tax dollars. We're probably going to hit another all-time high. Um, working with EMS, with the fire department and the county is moving in the direct, right direction. And congratulations to the county commissioner, John Maroney, for his re-election as our district uh, commissioner. John has been, the last two years, has been a good friend of the city of Madeira Beach. I've been able to go to John and get a lot of things, and he's gone to the county for me, the county administrator, and working with the new county administrator, uh, 
it's uh, we've, we've got a lot of friends at, at, at the county level so it's uh, we're doing good here in Madeira Beach we've made the right connections and uh, we're movers and shakers in the county and we're getting things done and it's teamwork guys so thank you for what all the commissioners do getting out there the residents and uh, staff thank you very much I forgot to say one thing what the program starts at 10 a.m. <laughs> Thursday morning <laughs> what time is it? You know, airhead up here. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. I apologize. It's, it's 10 a.m. Yes, sir. Mr. Yeah, I'm positive. Mr. City Attorney. I just want to bring yes I just want to bring you up to speed a little bit on the BP oil spill litigation. I've sent you an email earlier in the week. Um, it was a basically an update from co-counsel Kevin Dean who is the attorney that is um, close to the litigation that is occurring in, in Louisiana. Um, of course, I've been following it along. I, there's, um, I think I've got three or 400 hours um, of time in the case now. You don't necessarily see that. I'll eventually provide you with that spreadsheet so that you can see how much time that it takes, but thousands and thousands of documents come across my desk every oh. month on this case. Um, but uh, you remember that the the accident occurred in April of 2011. In the fall of 2013, the first part of the trial went underway in the main case, and this is the case where the federal government is fine, uh, has filed its case against BP and a couple of others that were involved in it. The owner of the rig and the owner of um, a, a portion of the equipment as to uh, the actual failure out there. Um, in the trial that took place, um, it was a bifurcated trial where the court was basically determining whether or not there was a violation of a couple of federal laws, including the Oil Pollution Act. Um, judge Barbier, the judge that's handling the case, one of many that is working on it, has finally entered an order after all the briefs have been put in and all the appeals have taken place relative to the first portion of the trial. And that was issued earlier in the week. It was a 153-page opinion. And to summarize it all, the judge found that BP was grossly negligent in what it was doing out there. Um, and why is that important? It's important for our case because of the fact that it's determined that, um, you know, you've got a bad actor from the very beginning. It wasn't just negligent where they failed to do something. It was gross negligence where they failed to do something and they knew it was going to happen. Um, it's a really, really interesting opinion if you want to read it. There's a lot of charts and examples as to what happened um, and down in dirty details about even to emails that were sent, to phone calls that were made, a lot of factual information as to what was happening minute by minute on that rig right before it exploded. Um, where, does that help, where does that fall in line with what we're doing in the case? There's the second half of the trial is going to be coming up here shortly and what's going to happen is, is that the court is going to determine how um, the fines are going to be levied against BP and the other bad actors. Um, and you may have seen the newspaper article in the last couple of days that talks about the fact that based upon the factors that are listed in the opinion, uh, BP could be fined up to $18 billion for what it has done there. That's kind of a good and bad thing. The good thing is that the opinion is helpful to us. The bad thing is, is that if they are fined so deeply that it's going to be less dollars for us, you know, in the plaintiff's mode. Um, even though they have settled millions of cases now, um, these smaller ones with direct hits in Louisiana, ours hasn't been heard yet. And the thought process is fine as they're going to do a test case. Hopefully, we thought it was going to be this fall, but because the opinion didn't come, the, all the government cases back at least another year. So they're going to try a test government case probably in the end of 2015, the fall or end of 2015, and then we'll know a little bit more. So don't be holding your breath as to, you know, getting some dollars here in the city of Madeira Beach on that litigation, but I can tell you that a lot of good things are coming out of what is happening there, and I'm really hopeful that in the end there is going to be some benefit for us keeping an eye on that, keeping tabs on it. And just in the email that I sent you, you know, I mentioned the three cities, Madeira Beach and Dunedin, um, but I also mentioned Indian Rocks Beach because a couple of months ago we started representing the city of Indian Rocks Beach too. Uh, their prior attorney then 
basically came out of the BP oil spill case and, and we came in. So my partner, Jay Danio, is handling the litigation for um, Indian Rocks Beach. So we've got three municipalities now that we're keeping a close eye on it. Um, but um, if you have any questions about it, it's very, very complicated and there are a lot of issues involved and there are going to be a lot more hearings and there are going to be, a, you know, many, many more trials before we get to the point where we're going to be able to, you know, put something in the in the city's coffers. But I wanted to let you know that we're working hard on it. So that's all Mr. I had. City Attorney, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. State Manager. Very quickly, uh, September 18th, so that's next week, Thursday is your next budget hearing. And the item that you referred from earlier, the uh, ALS contract, we may take that up at a special meeting based off of some information we might get this Friday. So you may get a uh, an agenda for a special meeting 15, 10 minutes before that um, agenda. So uh, keep uh, keep your eyes out for that. And then again, just uh, if, you, if you can, bring out your neighbors and friends to the September 11th uh, dedication, Pat, and that ad hoc committee. I'm, I'm trying to go back. I can remember my first meeting. Good. Who would have thought we were here, Pat, right? So um, between that ad hoc committee and Dave Marscano and his staff, I mean, it took us a while, but we got there. But now is the time to come out and, 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 and support it. So hopefully we'll see everybody there on Thursday morning at 10 o'clock. And one quick note to Mr. C. Manager. I know there was an email. I, I called you earlier today on a crosswalk light, and I know it went to uh, Dave's office. And the email coming back was that it was an older. I know I had to show you that. <laughs> um, about older crosswalk lights and the crosswalk lights there at the bamboo beer garden they are brand new so you're saying those are outdated now yeah okay i just need to know what i need to work it, on with the county and state yeah we, we're gonna i okay. think we're gonna have an uphill battle with that it, it appears as if i think no. what we got today from a staff standpoint is that FDOT is in a transition period of no longer buying replacement equipment for their old crosswalk beacons and, and that type of thing. But there's issues with the new stuff. And so now we've got <laughs> crosswalks not working. And, and I say that tongue in cheek because I think, it, you know, we, we've had some fatalities on Gulf Boulevard and you can't just say, well, we're not going to order the light bulb. I, we have to have working crosswalks. So um, I, I think the mayor's already taken a, a priority approach on that. He'll use his contacts. I'm gonna make some phone calls tomorrow and just say how how it know, does make sense. How can you <laughs> how can you do that? And and or or are you just looking to the cities to take over? Because frankly, if it's the cost of a light bulb that saves a life, uh, we'll we'll figure out a way to buy that light bulb. So. Uh, it, not, not a good one, but you know the truth is always somewhere in between on there. I, we got one response late in the day, uh, Mayor, so hopefully from a political standpoint you can figure out where this trickles down and maybe uh, we'll, we'll find something out. But anyway, if you're getting calls on crosswalks, let them know staff is on it. You don't have to contact <coughs> us. We're going to make it a priority immediately first thing in the morning and go from there. Thank you, Mr. City Manager. Is there anything else? Does anybody have any questions for the City Manager and Commission? Right. Madam City Clerk. That's awesome. All right. Seeing no further business, uh, business this meeting is adjourned at 658.